All right, welcome everybody. My name is Dr. Amanda Khalifa. This is the Scholar's Table, where we give you authentic information on graduate school application. Today, I have with me here one of our special guests, uh, who is a current MPH and MBA SUMA scholar here at the Johns Hopkins University. As you are all aware, the SUMA scholarship is one of the most prestigious scholarships you can get here at the Johns Hopkins uh, University. So. I've come all the way to the Curry Business School, and I must tell you, the environment is different. Everything here is different. Even their coffee is, is free. <laughs> Even the coffee is free. Can you imagine? We pay $4 at the Bloomberg School of Public Health, but it's literally free whilst when you enter into this building. So I should be visiting here very often. Amma, welcome to the Scholar's Table. Thank you. So, I mean, um, for those who don't quite understand what it takes to get a SUMA scholarship. I want you to, you know, tell us a bit about your background, um, you know, where things unfolded before you decided to come for graduate school. Right. So I was born in Ghana, in West Africa. I grew up in Kolibu and um, went through my primary education, eventually got admission to high school at Wesley Girls in Cape Coast. And um, from there, I went to the University of Ghana Medical School for my six years of medical education. Following that, I also um, worked for about two years in different hospitals for my house job rotation. Okay. And then worked in public health research briefly gained admission to Hopkins, so then I, I came here this year to start school. Okay. So, um, I think we would have to explore that bit more. So, you graduated medical school which year? In 2019. 2019? Yes. Okay. Um, and you attended Wesley Girls? <laughs> yes, I why, did. Why did you choose Wesley Girls? I mean... I mean what? <laughs> Anybody in Ghana, any girl in Ghana going to high school, your first choice. Are you sure? For very obvious reasons. Uh, I mean, unless you have, like, relatives who, like, you know, some people have, um, their parents went to another school, so they want to go to that school. But okay. if you have no affiliations, you're looking for the best school. That's it. <laughs> okay. So you're saying every, every girl's dream is Wesley girls? Most girls. Ah, I see. Okay. Anyway, so after house job, um, you spoke about you, your time with, you know, uh, public health research. What exactly were you doing in the public health space before you, you came to Hopkins? So I worked with um, a team of researchers as a collaboration funded by the NIH um, in the UK to set up a center in West Africa focused on understanding non-communicable diseases in West Africa and establishing interventions specific to the context in West Africa. So I worked with them for a couple of months. We yeah, basically to look into non-communicable diseases okay. in West Africa, primarily in Ghana, Niger, and Burkina Faso. Okay. So um, is that is that a point that you realized you needed to to get a formal degree in, in public health? Funny enough, no. I decided to, to get a degree in public health while I was still in medical school. I loved community health. Now, when, you, when I tell people that my favorite subject in medical school is community health, they're like, really? Yeah. You know, but I really enjoyed it because in community health, particularly in the health systems class, we learned a lot about how our health system was structured. We learned about insurance, we learned about leadership and management, we learned about finance. And then I, I mean, I enjoyed it. So at the back of my mind, yeah, I'm going to, you know, do something in mm -hmm. this field. And I also have always had an interest in business and management. So I also knew that at the back of my mind, at some point in my career, I was going to do an MBA. I think it was when I finished school worked for a bit in the system, faced the reality that what we see in the textbook and we hear in the classroom yeah. is not necessarily the same as what plays out in the hospitals. And 
also experience you know my, my parents are also researchers experiencing the power of research in advocating for patients needs yeah. and also seeing the challenges from the administrative side of you know running a hospital or a health system from different angles putting all of that together i knew that i'm definitely doing an mph to strengthen my research skills i'm definitely getting a business um, degree to also strengthen my administrative skills okay so you decided to 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 take the dual path yes. of mph and mba okay we'll talk about that um in the next couple of minutes let me take a sip of my free coffee <laughs> mine has been done Applying for a dual degree is sometimes different from just applying f- to the MPH program. Um, first of all, what was your motivation for deciding to apply for a dual MPH and MBA instead of just MPH program? Yeah, so like I said, I had already decided a long time ago that I was going to do the two degrees at some point in my career. Um, I was also considering the time factor, you know, if if there was an opportunity to do the two at the same time, I would want to take that opportunity and shorten the time and amount of money I could potentially spend on getting those two degrees. But beyond that, it was my interest in both research and in strengthening health systems that informed that decision to get not just an MPH, but add the MBA to it too as well, so that I could have that you know, um, two-sided view of okay. running a health system. Okay. So business and 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 public health. Yes. Okay. So let's let's talk about the the application process itself because I know most people are also interested in applying for a dual MPH and MBA program. Um. Looking back, when you were crafting your your statement of purpose. What were some of the essential elements you you incorporated? Even before we come to the statement of purpose, how did you start the research, or how did you start researching into programs? Because I know Hopkins is not the only school that offers dual and PH MBA. What went into your research, your background work in these programs? Right. So I I started the entire process almost two years before I actually put in my application Mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that I had good information and I wanted the opportunity to also talk to people. Okay. So, I mean, I remember I reached out to you around Mm -hmm. that time, like two years before I applied, but not only you, there were a lot of people from different institutions Mm -hmm. that I reached out to. My application journey involved like reading up on the internet about the different schools, but also about people who had gone through their program and what they were doing. After the program. Like Mm -hmm. after the program, yes. I had the opportunity to speak to several people from different institutions, professors in the institutions, and the alums from those institutions as well, including Hopkins. I did a lot of research online. I studied for the GRE for quite a bit of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> took the exams as well. I mean, it, it was a long, drawn-out process. Looking back, I think that I did my best, but if I could do things differently, I will prioritize reaching out to people in the different institutions mm-hmm. more than mm-hmm. I did. And I'll also be... I, you know, I was recently telling <laughs> someone in the MPH office that if I could do my application all over again, I will rewrite my entire statement yes. of <laughs> because <laughs> like with the information I have now what I've learned yeah, since about getting mm-hmm, here mm-hmm. even what I've learned about the application process and the kinds of people I've met here my mind being open yeah, to all sorts of things yeah. I would definitely have written it different and I would have aimed to write a more cohesive story that mm-hmm. communicates my my vision and how my background and That's experiences mm-hmm. Have influenced that vision. Okay, okay. So you, you you seem to have done pretty much a very extensive background research. Um, I mean, uh, there are some people who don't do anything at all, and 
they wake up one day they want to apply to graduate school but it seems like you put a lot of thought into into the process um let's talk about your statement of purpose right mm -hmm. what <laughs> what were some of the essential elements that you think were in your statement of purpose that propelled you to get the, the summer scholarship i know like um the review committee take a holistic approach to reviewing your materials, which include your statement of purpose, recommendation letters, uh, your academic background, and even your life before medical school or even before you, you start thinking of applying. But when you were crafting your statement of purpose, what were some of the highlights that you could think of? Um, so like you rightly said, we consider a whole host of things beyond just a statement of purpose. I don't think that's the only thing that determines um, who gets what scholarship. Um, but specifically about my statement of purpose, I, I'll address it in two ways, um, or I should say from two perspectives. What I did and what I think now with all the knowledge I have, what I think I could have done better. Mm -hmm. So I did um, try to highlight what I think I can contribute to the school community, especially as um, a graduate. Mm -hmm. And I also try to focus on why I think I should be in this program at this time and what, what I hope to get from the program. Okay. I try to give a bit of my background as well. But in terms of what I would have done better or what I would do better if I had to do this all over again, I would focus on telling um, a more cohesive story or a better story of what my vision is, how this program fits into that, what I hope to bring to the community and you know tie it all together in a nice mm -hmm. in a nicer story, mm -hmm. more or less. Yes. I, I think I would I would focus on doing that part of it better. Okay. But maybe if you had put all these things together to package it into a nice story form, they wouldn't have gotten the summer scholarship. I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> Counterfactual. <laughs> anyway. I don't know. But yeah. I'm just grateful for how things <laughs> oh, turned yes, out. Oh, yes, definitely. Regardless, yeah. Yeah. So let's let's talk a bit about uh, recommendation letters. What was, you know, the strategies that you, you deployed in specifically selecting who writes your recommendation letter and, you know, how many people? Yeah, I, I know that the temptation typically is to look for high-ranking people to write the recommendation letter. And interestingly, when, when, when I was doing my research, I remember at least reading this on the Hopkins side, don't, they, they say don't look for you know, the person with the biggest title, look for somebody who can speak specifically to your situation. So that was what I tried to do. I did have at least one um, high-ranking recommender, but out of, out of my four recommenders, well, of my four recommenders, I focused on picking people who I had worked directly with or had some form of direct relationship with mm -hmm. and could speak to my work ethic and could speak to my work ethic with specific examples of things that had happened okay. while I worked with them. So that was a focus for me. People who knew me and had worked directly with me or interacted directly with me rather than just someone with a big title. Okay. Yeah, and I think that that is very crucial. Uh, you need someone who can really tell uh, the specific encounters he has had with you, give like personal anecdotes, examples of mm -hmm. the kind of projects you've worked on, and I think that that is pretty much. And of course, um, it should be superior to you. Oh yes, all yes, superior. Yes. Yeah, so that's fair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's talk about the GRE. I know that, <laughs> yeah, I, I know that GRE is required. So if you are applying for the dual MPH and MBA program, you need to get a GRE uh, for the MBA component. If you are applying for only MPH, you don't need GRE. But if you are applying for the dual degree, you need the, um, the GRE. The GRE. Uh, I mean, for me, when I, when I wrote the GRE and the results came, I was very tempted to to restart the whole process and write it again because it was pretty much average, right? It yeah. was it was an average score. It wasn't anything impressive. Um, but how was how was your experience with preparing for the GRE, the materials you use, and what time duration did you use to prepare for that? Yeah, <laughs> preparing for the GRE was was also kind of tough because the the main focus time that I 
had to work on my entire application. I mean, not not the entire two years, like the the period mm-hmm. starting from say March of last year till I put in my application yeah. in October. Um, I was also working at the same time in an emergency department, so it was tough. But what helped me was when I started thinking about um, applying that two years prior, mm-hmm. I got some of the materials and started, you know, casually going through and okay. studying for it before this focus period of studying. So in this period, I actually, this March to October period, I did more solving questions and practicing because I had done the concepts earlier. Before. I mean, it, 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 was, it was tough because you know, the Jerry is not, it's not um, mapped out to follow our educational yeah, system. Yeah. You know, the way we, we uh, thought is different. I mm. mean, I didn't do bad, honestly. I didn't do bad, but I mean, I could have done better. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. yeah. It, it, was, it was an interesting experience, I should say. Okay. Do you mind sharing your score? I mind. <laughs> 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 if, if, if you meet me after, without the recording, I'll tell yeah. you. <laughs> I mean, but it, I mean, it was it was it was good. Otherwise, um, yeah. yeah. But you so, know my score. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You share your score with me, and I was actually impressed. I was like, oh, you were, you know, you weren't so much impressed about it, but I was impressed because it was, yeah. yeah some of I think some of the components were much better than mine. Um, I think the, the the ones I did pretty well was the the verbal mm-hmm. and then the the essay the that oh. writing part. Yeah, I think oh. I did much better. Well, um, I tend to be hard on myself. Yeah, too, so. yeah, I, uh, yeah. You were too hard on yourself. I think <laughs> you did much better when you sent it to me. I was like, oh wow, you did well. Anyway, <laughs> so you. that 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 is the GRE. So you have your statement of purpose. You have your recommendation letters. So you have your GRE. And then what other what other measures did you put in place? Like where's evaluation and all those that, what other measures did you put in place? Like where's evaluation and all those things? Yes, yes. I did that. So I think overall good preparation helped. Because I had done my research early, I knew what I needed to do before the application period opened. So mm-hmm. I did my West evaluation like pretty early. Okay. I had my 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 trans before the application period opened. I think I sent it in in April or so to got that out of the way as well. I started working on some of the, the sofas um, components yes. too before it opened. So that I got that out of the way as well. I wrote my GRE to so my results were ready like mm-hmm. pretty early. Yeah. As yeah. I, I, I was prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that that is a very uh, important aspect to highlight. Uh, there are a couple of people I know whose application are not being reviewed because the GRE process is not complete. So the schools are saying they can't review their their, their application. So as you said, you have to start early. Yeah, if you know you're applying for MPH or anything that has to do with worse evaluation, you have to start early. Yeah, because I mean, even with, I'm saying I started two years, but even with all my preparation, there are things I missed. Like there were things I didn't even know until after, mm-hmm. you know, I had submitted my application. I was like, oh, I didn't know this. I yeah. missed, hey, God, will I get admitted? <laughs> like, you know? <laughs> yeah. But even with all the preparation, there, there's so much to know, so much. So it's better to start early yeah. and yeah. to talk to people early. Okay, all right. So, um, how, how many how many schools did you apply to? Are there any specific schools that you just apply for only MPH? And are there any other school that you applied for a dual MPH MBA program? So, I mean, it, it might have been a risky thing to do. Mm-hmm. And of course, it was also dictated to by my pocket. But I had specific goals. So okay. I chose my school based on those goals. I only applied to three schools. Okay. Um, I was looking specifically for a dual degree program, so I didn't apply to any um, only MPH okay. program. Okay. Everywhere I applied to, I applied to a dual degree program okay. because I wanted to do the MPH and the MBA at the same time. Okay. Not only because of the reduced, potentially reduced cost and reduced time, but also I wanted to get the two perspectives simultaneously so that I mm-hmm. could like, you know, pr- proceed with that idea. So I only applied to Yale, Emory, and to Hopkins. Okay. I mean, yeah. Very uh, risky because all three are top. Yeah, top now schools. I look back, I'm like, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It was a high chance of not getting any. Yes, yes, know, yes, yes. So th- those those were, uh, I think those three are 
the well-known dual degree programs yes. of MPH, MBA, Yale, MOE, and, and Hopkins. But there are many others. Yeah, there are many others. <laughs> I mean, you should go for the highest, right? Yeah. Why settle for, for, for low? Anyway, so um, when when did you start receiving your admission offers? I think the first admission offers. Okay, offer. so, so before that, were there an interview component to the MPH MBA uh, so process? The good thing about Hopkins is you, you do one application for the MPH MBA everywhere else. You have to apply to the MPH separately and apply to the MBA, MBA separately. separately. Very stressful, very <laughs> <laughs> expensive, you know, different requirements, you know. Um, I did interview for all three schools. Okay. I, I had to interview for all three programs. For the MBA side of it, none of Not the MPH yeah. um, mm -hmm. programs interviewed. My first admission offer was from Hopkins. Okay. I, got, I got my admission offer pretty early after putting in an application. I don't remember which one came after that. Yeah, but Hopkins was the first that came, and then the others also came. I got admitted into all of them, so they. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the the interview. What what were some of the questions that they asked you? Um, <laughs> what were like? How was the experience like? For someone who wants to apply to an MPH MBA, knowing that you would have to interview, what were like? What went into your preparation, and how was the the whole encounter like? Um, trying to remember, but it, I it, again a lot of research. Mm -hmm. I was on the internet a lot, yeah. looking for like specific interview questions for the different schools, trying to understand from as much information as I could glean what um, what kinds of questions they asked. There's is a player admit or there, there's some I can't remember them now, mm -hmm. but there's yeah. some websites online so that specialize in giving MBA questions. So I try to practice all those questions as well. Okay. Some of the the website the school websites also give you an idea of some of the po the possible questions that they could not specific questions but like areas that could be discussed. So extensive research. I practice. Hey, my, the people around me suffered. You <laughs> interview me <laughs> several times, you know, because I practice and practice. I mean, even then it wasn't perfect. I think the interviews that I think went well were the interviews that were relaxed. We had a yeah, conversation, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, loved here and there. It was good. Like, you know, I had those mm -hmm. ones, those ones were, were good. The, the, MP, the MBA interviews were not serious. Yeah, and they were all virtual, right? I did one in person and then two virtual. Which one was in person? I did Yale in person. Okay, okay. I so happened to be in that area oh, around okay, okay. that time. Yeah, so okay, okay, okay. I just moved. Okay, okay. I just moved away. All right, but do you remember some of the questions they... Yes, one common question I ran through was, um, tell me about the time you succeeded at something. Um, tell me about the time you failed at something. Um, what are your strengths and weaknesses? You know those kinds yeah. of behavioral questions. Mm -hmm. um, I I learned this now in business school. They they, they teach us that too. But be, I had read about you know the STAR method where yeah. you describe yeah. mm -hmm. the situation, mm -hmm. you talk about the task and the action area. So I did my best <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> representation of that, you know, and talked about some of the things I had succeeded at or the things I failed at. And even in that conversation, some of the conversations I had. I realized there were things that I, especially those of us coming from, you know, um, a certain part of the world, mm -hmm. it's easy to downplay some of our Your achievements, yes, yes. But now you are talking to somebody else, and then they say, oh, I see you did this. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in my mind, I'm like, hey, now I'm too important. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I didn't that is know, true. But yeah, mm -hmm. and then you speak to that as well. So yeah, I, I enjoyed overall. I think I, I enjoyed the interview process. Okay, yeah. okay, that's good. So, um. When did you decide that it's... I mean, you got admission to Yale, Emory, and Hopkins. Um, Yale, I got admitted into the MPH, MPH program, not okay. the MBA program. But Emory, I got admitted into the MPH and the MBA program. Okay. And then Hopkins, the MPH and MBA program. Okay. So, um, how did you then decide that you, you were coming to Hopkins? So... <laughs> 
all three schools for various reasons were viable options for me. Okay. But of course, Hopkins, public health, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. So to get admitted to Hopkins, to get like the full, in fact, to get like good scholarship from, I had the best offer from Hopkins. Mm-hmm. It, it was a no-brainer. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think too much. I didn't discuss. I, oh, no, no, no. I saw the offer. I said, thank you very much. Yeah. Accept. <laughs> okay. So, so did your admission come with this with a summer scholarship or admission came and then subsequently the summer scholarship followed? So I think Hopkins gives admission first and then gives scholarship, scholarship. for the So I, I got my scholarship way after I got admission. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, you are Hopkins. How, I mean, your first time coming to Hopkins, what was the experience like? I would, I would, if you can break it down into two, the first time stepping into the the Bloomberg building and then your first time stepping into the Curry Business School. How was the experience like? <laughs> so, do you know the funny thing? Right. I don't know if it was nervousness or excitement or what it was, but the first day of orientation, hey, of course I've got ready, you know, commuted, got to school at around like eight. Mm-hmm. And then she said, hey, where's this one? She said, oh, and she knows everybody. Yeah. She knows everybody. She knows everybody. She's an amazing woman. Oh, hi, Alma. You seem to be a bit early. I, I, I thought the thing was starting at 8. Oh, say I'm like an hour early. Yeah. I was over. I was the first person to show up <laughs> for orientation. Um, I was, I think I was equal parts nervous and excited. It's, it's a very different experience on so many levels. Yeah. By the time I came to Cary, though, I think I had settled a bit because I'd done a whole summer term at Bloomberg. Okay. You know, mm-hmm. and before I came to Cary to start school, I still was excited, still had anticipation. Like, what am I going to learn here? Who am I going to meet? What's it going to be like? Looking back over the last couple of months, I don't think I fully settled yet. I'm still <laughs> adjusting, honestly. Yeah. I'm still adjusting to a lot of different things. I do wish I adjusted faster, but I'm also trying not to be too hard on myself as well. Um, I'm excited for the next phase. I want to see how more involved I can be in the community moving okay. forward. Mm-hmm. It's, de- it's definitely been a, a steep yeah. <laughs> learning, a curve steep for learning curve for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but let's let's talk about the the scholarship itself, the SOMA scholarship. What what are the the components that you got? I mean, for, for me, what I got was my tuition waiver for the dual degree for the two years. Um, stipend was paid for two years. No, stipend was stipend was paid for one year. Um, health insurance was also paid, uh, of course, plus the the other uh, other perks. What? What is the package now for those who are doing the dual degree? Yeah, it's the same thing. Same. Full tuition for the two years, a stipend for one year, health insurance covered, then the enrollment fee was waived as well. Like, yeah, like every everything. Every everything. And for me, it's it's a it, it, it's a constant reminder to me that I'm here for a purpose. Mm-hmm. Whether the purpose I'm aware of or divinely orchestrated purpose to focus on, you know. What can I contribute? Because yeah. this is a huge investment. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. It, it's not small money. If you put everything together, it's like it's how much? It's big money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and j- j- just today I was thinking about it. I'm, I'm very grateful for the opportunity, but at the same yeah. time, I also realize the responsibility that it comes, it comes with. with it. Yeah. Not just for the community here in the school and beyond, but also for you know where we are coming from yeah. to make sure that's I succeed and I'm positioned in a place where I can also contribute. Yeah, yeah, yeah because that's almost like two hundred thousand, right? Yeah. If, if you put everything together, mm. it should be like two hundred thousand mm. dollars all waived. That is that is an incredible opportunity. Yes. Um, so investment. Yeah. So I mean, coming from Ghana and your interaction with other Suma scholars, I mean, you are like twelve, right? Fourteen. Fourteen out of mm. over two hundred students. Wow. Yeah, so 14 out of 250 students who are SOMA scholars, your interaction with the other 13 from different countries, you know, across the world, 
how is that experience like you know when you guys start interacting yeah. what kind of things come in your mind i mean i think we we all hit it off like pretty well from the beginning it's an amazing group i really like the other summer scholars honestly yeah. um we have periodic meetings sometimes with um we have like training sessions sorry mm-hmm. <laughs> we have training sessions we also get to meet like people from people in like high places or people who have achieved certain things so we can learn from them ask them questions it's a very relaxing environment our mentors the faculty mentors yeah. are amazing people you know the other summer scholars are i mean they've achieved a lot in their lives we've all achieved mm-hmm. yeah. quite a bit in our lives but there's also this you know thread of humility that runs mm-hmm. through um the commit it, it when, when you talk to when, like when we talk you realize everybody's thinking about what can i do yeah. how can i make my world a better place mm-hmm. you know yeah. it's a place i i'm the only mph mba student there sometimes okay. the times we have our meetings it means i have to like squeeze some 15 minutes to rush from Bloomberg to carry it so that I don't miss my class. Yeah. But I still go mm-hmm. because I get inspired by yeah. hanging out with these people. I laugh. I get good food to eat for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it, it, it's just a very inspiring group to be a part yeah. of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Amazing people. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, good, it's a good vibe. Yes, it's a, good, it's a very it's a good, good vibe. vibe down to earth people. I really like them. I, if you can't tell, I really like them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very down to earth people. Uh, anyway, yeah. are you guys planning on any any fun trips uh, or any activities? I think we have one trip coming up. I'm not sure of the details yet, but okay. we have one trip coming up. All right. Okay. Now let's talk about your experience with the business school. I mean, how 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 is your experience here like the students, the kind of courses you're taking, how how is that? Do you think that is worth it? That was worth the all the all the time you put in. Oh yeah, I'm glad I did it. I mean, it's very different from what I studied before coming here. I, I was a doctor, you know, mm-hmm. and now I'm taking classes in accounting, my microeconomics, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But then also classes in negotiation. It's a very amazing experience. I like the emphasis on um, data and analytics. That Kari has a strong focus on analytics. I love that because the way the world is going right now, yeah. if you don't have even basic knowledge in that, it's not good. Mm-hmm. And also their strong focus on healthcare. They, they do try to focus on other industries as well. They are doing a good job of diversifying or broadening the curriculum here, but the strong, the, the, there's a strong... Um, healthcare expertise yeah, here as well yeah. that I appreciate. Mm-hmm. I think my favorite part of business school is the career development office. Mm-hmm. You know, having people dedicated to helping us like craft our resumes, our LinkedIn profiles, how to even talk in an interview, you know, talk to people professionally yeah. and all. Just like it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to, to some extent. <laughs> Not resume and all of that, but at least that's in How to talk and how to walk. Uh, well, yeah, anyway. I mean, that's my life. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I I really loved working with the career development office here. Okay. Amazing All people. Right. Shout out to Tracy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And the, I mean, and the area too is quite different, right? In it Abba, is. It's, it's the waterfront. Oh yeah, the oh. site. The site is amazing. And I'm sitting there studying, and the microeconomics is going over my head. I just look to the waters. <laughs> Encourage myself. Yeah. So I mean, you've done first term. Um, Summer so, term, first term, second term. Okay, but your summer term was in, in, in Talia Hopkins? It was Bloomberg, yes, it was entirely. Okay, it was entirely at Bloomberg. Okay, yeah. so currently, what are some of the courses you're taking? Yeah. This term, I took microeconomics and negotiation, leadership and organizational behavior, still did professional development, um, foundations of business of health, Mm-hmm. And then I took a few electives at Bloomberg. So I did biostatistics at Bloomberg, and then international travel, wellness and safety, and then systems thinking. Okay. Yeah. Only for this term? Only this term. How many credits is that? <laughs> 17.5. <laughs> I, I, my aim is to not go beyond 18. Beyond 18. I think beyond that, yeah. 18, I start to go crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. I think that's, that's fair. Mm-hmm. Anyway, 
as you as you've rightly said you've been given an amazing opportunity to study two degrees in two years everything paid for uh which is an incredible opportunity to have so what what is your plan what is your future goal what is your what are you aspiring to do with all this accounting and microeconomics <laughs> for someone who did you know um pathology and physiology and all that Microbiology, how yeah. does that fit in in your career um so like like we were rightly warned before coming your career goals are likely to change or evolve a lot and i i do see some evolution in my plans but my north star remains to see efficient health systems in africa how exactly i'm still figuring that out but i want to be able to combine my clinical expertise combine the public health knowledge combine my business acumen as well and contribute to strengthening or restructuring our health systems back in africa definitely starting in ghana yeah okay i think that's that's a good aspiration to have <laughs> hopefully uh it, it, it comes to, to yeah God hopefully it comes us. to pass <laughs> Um, anyway, so let's let's do some trivia questions, right? Um, I mean, if if you have to describe your experience at Hopkins with the movie title, <laughs> <laughs> what 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 would it be? Can you be a Kumau title? Oh yeah, you can be a Kumau title. <laughs> Shout out to Kumau. I'm a camera ball. Hmm, it's not easy. <laughs> Yeah, you, you do it. Oh, yes. You. Yeah, you have to. You have to do it. So, what was the funniest or most unexpected misconception you had about the U.S. before coming? That's a hard one. Not, I, I can't think of any. <laughs> misconception. Misconception. a misconception i mean because and it's not even funny i mean i i i didn't know at least in theory that i mean there are poor people in america and some parts you see death on the streets and all but you know i think generally without actively thinking we, we think of america as a rich place where yeah. there's no on the, there's no on the street and mm-hmm. the sidewalk is white everywhere is nice everybody is happy you know and to some extent those things are true but also realizing how deep the disparities and inequalities here are. yeah you know when i came first it was like almost every class in public health they're talking about health disparities and inequalities i said we know there is are they that bad that you have to tell us in every class but i'm learning that they are you know yeah. and there's a lot more to learn and a lot more that can be done to improve those things as well. It's not all rosy here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. What's your favorite spots on the Hopkins campus? Either Bloomberg or Cary? Uh, I think this study. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because, I mean, this, I think this is the only study, unless I haven't discovered, is this the only study room that has like the entire wall, the viewers can see, but the entire wall on this side is an open window from floor to ceiling. And you can see the the roundabouts outside, the buildings, the streets, people coming yeah, and going. Yeah. It's a nice view. I, I like this place. Oh, and the free coffee machine. The free <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to free coffee at Free Akari. coffee Akari. <laughs> So, um, uh, Ghana Jollof or Nigeria Jollof? Don't your be, no, your don't, don't be biased. I'm not biased. I've eaten both. It's not a question. Uh, Next question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So let's talk a bit about. Let's go back to your time at Wesley Girls. What what was what were some of the um what were some of the unique things <laughs> that you would think that makes Wesley Girls like the best school? In Ghana, for for ev- for any female, what like what makes it the best school? I mean, apart from our wasi results, oh, now we see our track here. record of you know going to top schools, top programs. Uh-huh. Apart from that, yeah, apart from that, <laughs> what is unique about Wesley girls? 
the discipline in Rocky Girls is not exaggerated. I mean, we we uh, we follow a very strict routine. You know, we do unimaginable things in a very short period of time. Talk to any gay girl, and we, we <laughs> sometimes we are surprised at the, the things that we did when we were back in school. Mm-hmm. The discipline that is instilled in us in that school is unmatched. Mm. Yeah. Did, did they teach you how to walk? They do. <laughs> and how to we put books on us <laughs> and how to eat <laughs> and <laughs> yeah we have to eat with cutlery in the dining hall uh-huh. you know um, walking we put books on head and walk the line walk like twice. a cat oh not like a cat I mean <laughs> <laughs> but at least to, to you know achieve good poise uh-huh. um, they, they teach us all of that those things are important to mm. pull up at us and not, but those things are important no. they, they you help people, you stand out you Just people focus up. on the uh, on the minorities. You uh, major on the minorities. Uh, yeah. We 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 major in the major things and, and add the minorities as bonus. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So um to the prospective students who are watching us who are aspiring to apply to a dual degree or even to the MPH program, can you look inside the camera and then tell, you know, offer a piece of advice to to all prospective applicants? It's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. And in the midst of the application process, it might seem difficult, it might seem impossible. You will be aired by people you reach out to. (laughs) You will find people who will help you to. Don't give up. Don't give up because at the end of it all, it is absolutely worth it. Trust me. Well, you, you have heard it all. It's worth every bit of your time. So put in the work. Uh, don't underestimate the process. Put in the work. Do your due diligence. Do the research. And then eventually, um, you, you, you reap what you sow, right? So thank you very much for watching. It's been an amazing time with, with Ama. Bye. Ama is Suman, yes. right? Anyway, take care, everybody. Is that... Anyone you want to shout out to Glenn, in Ghana? We're not, we're not <laughs> if I start my shout outs, but... Okay, say hello to three people in Ghana. Three people in Ghana. Yeah. <laughs> or a couple of people in Ghana. My mom, my dad, my siblings, my teachers, my the people I worked with, everybody I know. <laughs> this is hard. You can't pick one person. Somebody else will be angry. Yeah, someone will say you didn't mention you didn't your mention name. You didn't mention my name. Right? Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Hi to everyone. Anyway, thank you very much, everybody. It's been a Ghana collaboration. See you in the next episode. Bye-bye.